Hello Blue Bears, and here's we are back today with another Air Beast of the Mesozoic video. Oh, showcasing another four of my figures I have. <clears throat> so we'll be starting off with the Diablo Ceratops. Uh, oops, the name of this animal means uh, Devil's Horned Face because of the of how its horns look look on the head. This is one of the more smaller variety of ceratopsids, but still pretty large compared to a person. And just like the last figures, the articulation is very good. The head can move side to side, rotation at the head, and you can look up that far and look down that far. The mouth can open nice and wide so you can see inside the mouth oh who are those teeth yeah. the waist can also rotate a bit you get some turning action the tail is also on a ball joint so it has full rotation the legs are poseable as well. The knees can bend that much, much, and the feet can rotate. Mm -hmm. Now I don't remember what animal was used for the coloration of the pattern. I am speaking out. I'm just speaking out. Anyway, anyways, uh, um, I don't know what animals use for the coloration, and and uh, we have a look at the collector's card right here, wonderfully made, okay. and on the back, back some information about the animal you can read. Need. For example, Diablo Ceratops. E Tony. E names means devil horned face. This animal could be up to 18 feet long. It was found in the Wawi Formation in Utah. It lived 79.9 million years ago in the Lake Cretaceous. It was and it was named by James Ian Kirkland in 2010. Here. Apparently, Diablo Ceratops is one of the oldest known ceratopsids. It shared its wetland habitat with many the, uh, other dinosaurs, including hadrosaurs, and chylosaurs, and pachycephalosaurs, with Lythronyx, which is a tyrannosaur, likely being the apex predator. Here. Again, there's a nice look at the figure. You see all the wonderful detail. Oh, like the eye, eye, and the paint scheme. Very well done. It's a very lovely looking figure. He definitely he would recommend. Next up for the next figure, we have is the Chasmosaurus, the opening the opening lizard, because of the of the holes in the frill. Well, called Fenestrae. Okay. The, the reason scientists believe scientists believe the reason why the Fenestrae was so open in the skull of Casasaurus was 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 meaning that it probably wasn't used for defense because if it tried using this for defense it would seem very fragile and be easily Destroyed, destroyed. So they think that the frill was very brightly colored, and thus making it hollow would be, mean it would be better used for display purposes than actual combat. Also, Ocasosaurus has a very wide frill, and it is also the namesake 
for the Chasmosaurine being Ceratopsids, which the Chasmosaurines are the other subfamily of Ceratopsids. Okay, again, the articulation, the mouth can open that wide, right, the legs are posable, the neck that can go up that far, that can go down, rotation, very good rotation, and now, now, now the Chasmosaurus had three horns, but for some reason the figure for Beast in the Mesozoic is depicted only with a single horn, horn. and the color and pattern design for this, for this figure was the green mantella frog, like which it almost looks like a spitting image of that of that color and pattern of that of that particular species of frog. Um, once again, we get close up for the detail. You can see just how amazingly well done this figure was made. These are very high quality figures, and especially the larger ones can weigh very heavy because of this high quality plastic they're made of. And Again, a little shading of blue. You see a little blue right here on the figure. It's very light blue, so it might not be easy for you to see the at first glance, but it's definitely still an impressive animal. I look at the uh, the art on the card. Card, very wonderful artwork. Eric, this one, this artwork is made by Shannon Beamont. Right? And on the and here's the information on the back. Back of the card, or right here, Chasmosaurus belli, name meaning opening lizard. Heard, uh, could grow up, oh, up to 15.7 feet in length, and was found in the Dinosaur Park formation in Alberta, which is located in Canada. It lived 76 and a half million years ago in the late Cretaceous. It was originally named by Lawrence Lambie in 1902 but then it was renamed in 1914 because originally in 1902 it was originally called Monoclonius belli which Monoclonius is a not very valid species of dinosaur anymore and is now believed to be a juvenile centrosaurus or is, is. so its name was changed to Chasmosaurus instead so Chasmosaurus belli was a Chasmosaurian of average size the meaning of its name, opening lizard, refers to the large openings or fenestrae on its frill. This species was originally named Monoclonius belli in 1902. So, I really love the art art that goes into these cards. They are very well made. One last look at the Chasmosaurus, and then we'll move on to the next figure. The next figure, here up, is a small one. This is is the one eighteenth scale Protoceratops. Mm -hmm. Now you can see this guy is tiny. Now in the Ceratopsin series, there is the one six scale version, which was the original version of this figure mm -hmm. here, which is much huger. Here, probably as big as the other two figures I showed earlier. Here, but in my opinion, the 118 scale versions are much better because they look nicer to display with your larger figures. Here's now, look up here, and Chasmosaurus, a Protoceratops, it is a small animal, which is a lot there. And as you can see, it will have Diablo and Casmo come up to show this how small this guy looks next to these two animals. And as you can see, a huge, huge size difference between the three. The, yes, quite a tiny animal. Well, well, the Protoceratops and Pops was about, about the size of a sheep. The sheep-sized animal. Well, and its fossils was found in Mongolia. In Mon and it's one of the most popular dinosaurs, I would say, hey, especially with a fossil that was found of it, where it was found 
dead while in the in the middle of a fight with a velociraptor, about a call which this fossil was called the fighting dinosaurs. And apparently, uh, it is believed that these two uh, passed by a collapsing sand dune, and that's how their how the fossil was preserved. And here's now the mini figures don't come with a, a card. Alright, but they do come with a large pamphlet that you can cut out from the back of the box. box. So, Protoceratops and Drusy, that I'll read here, which Protoceratops and Drusy eat, which Protoceratops means first horned face. This animal could reach lengths of 5.9 feet. It was found in the Gobi Desert of Mongolia. It lived 71 million years ago in the late Cretaceous. So it lived around the same time as, well, actually I think maybe a later, later, uh, it lived a later in time than these two right here. Uh, it was named by, named by um, Walter W. Granger and William K. Gregory in 1923. And its characteristics belong to an, a group of early Horned dinosaurs called Protoceratopsis today. Protoceratopsis, Protoceratops was smaller and lacked the developed horns of its ceratopsian their cousins or ceratopsid cousins. Protoceratops Ops and Drusi is best known for the fighting dinosaurs fossil, along with Velociraptor mongoliensis. Which I do plan on getting the 118 scale version of the Velociraptor to uh, have these guys next to each other. Mm. The uh, color design of the Protoceratops is based on the thorny devil lizard. Weird. And you see this, the blotches of brown over the cream colored body. You also notice that this animal has a very wide head. Which is a very common trait with ceratopsians. Pins, yeah, uh, the hold up that huge frill. And you see, unlike the Casasaurus and Diaboceratops, Protoceratops lacks any horns on the face. Both besides this little bump that you might consider a horn, but otherwise it's pretty hornless. Yes, but it does walk on all fours, just like ceratopsians. So it's believe that but the next figure we'll be showing is even more more primitive than the protoceratops. And this is is Attacosaurus or Mongoliensis. This little guy right here. This is a very small animal. This animal is about as large as a Labrador. If you've ever seen a Labrador Retriever, that's about how big this animal is. At, le at least the species of Cetacosaurus. Chris, yes, I mean, um, it's a very interesting animal. As you see, it's very primitive compared to these other ceratopsids, even more primitive than the protoceratops, because you see the difference is, is that it walks on two legs. It has no frill, it has no horns, and and that's, that's really what different and it all has long arms. Arms which that's really what distinguishes it from the other ceratopsians. And it's, just showing how primitive it really is compared to the other ones. And this animal also has a row of bristles on its tail that go down its tail, well, as you can see. see. We are unsure if uh, more advanced ceratopsids had these bristles, like Cetacosaurus, or if they just didn't. And, and, um, the coloration of this figure is supposed to be based on the 2019 Robert Nichols reconstruction of Cetacosaurus, which was based on a specimen 
that we found out what its actual color is. There it is. Which Sotachosaurus is one of the few dinosaurs that we actually know what color it was when it was alive. Showing us more darker back but lighter belly the color. Here. Also notice on Sotachosaurus it has little cheek horns on the sides of its face. Yes. And like the Proceratops, these figures come with interchangeable legs. So it has standing and sitting legs. So you can make the sitting legs look like it's walking, which is what I, which is what I did. I made it just look like it's taking a little walk, a little stroll. Well, just as its species name is, it was found in in Mongolia. In Mongolia, <coughs> and here's the the card here on the back. Back. And it's a Cetacosaurus mongoliensis. This, oh, Cetacosaurus mongoliensis. The name Cetacosaurus means parrot lizard because of the because of the parrot-like beak this animal has. You know, it's not Two really. Bears? Anyways, back to the lesson. Uh, its fossils have been found in Mongolia, China, and Siberia. Oh, it can get up to six and a half feet in length. I mean, and it lived 101 million years ago in the early Cretaceous. It was named by Henry Fairfield Osborne in 1923. No. It's not about me? No, I said 101, 101 million years ago. That's one of, one of the earliest Ceratopsians, Cetacosaurus mongoliensis, it was the best known of up to 12 different Cetacosaurus species. This genus is famously known for having a tail row of tall quills and a parrot-like beaks. beaks. And originally, you, if you looked at this animal without knowing, knowing that it was a ceratopsian, you probably wouldn't think that it was actually related to Triceratops in any way, because it lacks any of the traits you would normally, um, normally associate with ceratopsians. But it just shows how far back these this group of animals holds really is. Yeah. Um, which Ceratopsians as a whole as a whole group first appeared during the Middle Jurassic or the Late Jurassic, and then they started to diversify in the late in the er, late Cretaceous and started to look more like the Ceratopsids. So it just shows the change that happened between the between the different groups. You, know, you had these basal primitive ceratopsians, then you had animals like the protoceratopsids, and then in between you had like Zuni ceratops in between, and then you would get to the ceratopsidae family. Yeah, and then you would get these guys. So you be showing a very much very big change among the animals. And and um, and that is all of the figures here's that I'm sharing with you today. Hey, thank you for watching. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Join the Blue Bear Fam. Yep, and don't oh, talk. Oh, and, uh -oh. yeah. There you go. Uh, make sure you <clears throat> let me try to get uh, like, comment, and subscribe, and share this video. Oh, and we tell a member of the Boo Bear fam. Fam. And a ship. And a ship. And join the membership. Join the membership. Yep. Two ninety nine and three ninety nine. Oh, bust your kneecaps. Yep, bust your kneecaps. Um, I'll use my Diablo Ceratops to <laughs> stab your knees. Uh, anyway, so thank you, and come again next time. All right, thank you for watching.